The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. James chapter 4 verse 6 But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Have you ever wondered if God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble? Who then accepts and endorses the proud? It is none other than Satan. Satan endorses the proud. He enjoys the proud. After all, that sin of pride is something he committed in heaven. This sin caused war in heaven. This alone caused war in heaven. We must understand the gravity of pride. It literally caused a war in heaven. A created being thought to exalt himself above Almighty God. That is the nature of pride. Pride is destructive. It equates one with God and makes one rival with Him. Anyone that is puffed up is in a way trying to position himself as God. This is because God sits on high and pride attempts to exalt the person to the position of God. The greatest aim of pride is to seek glorification and self-exaltation. Pride is self-centered. It yearns for self-adoration. It seeks to be seen, honored, and eulogized. It was pride that created the devil. It was pride that created the satanic creatures that ruins lives. We can notice from Isaiah's account that the devil used the word I will five times. He was self-centered. He wanted to rise above his maker. Pride is all about me, 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 me. I firmly believe that proud people do not go to heaven. The reason is because accepting the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior requires a level of humility that a proud person cannot reach. Salvation requires humility. Salvation requires an individual to see how desperately they are in need of God. Pride will send you to hell. For someone to even be saved, they need to deal with the issue of pride. To humble yourself and acknowledge that you are a sinner requires humility and a great deal of it. Humble yourself. I honestly believe that many people have heard the gospel message and felt and known its truth, but they have rejected it simply because that of the spirit of pride. They were unable to humble themselves and acknowledge they needed a savior. Humility is something that opens doors with God that nothing else can. There is no substitute for humility. It draws you and God closer together. Humility will expose to the things of God. Humility changes your perspective on the things of this earth. Humility will change how you view the accolades and the applause of this world. Humility is something that God values. God values a person more than we understand. Now the reason why pride is such a problem in people's lives is that it is a sin that can be hard to identify. Pride can sit in a person's heart and the whole world will never know it. Pride has a deceptive nature about it. I mean, pride is so deceptive that it can even hide itself from the being it is inside. Do you know you can be full of pride and not know it? So what is a sign that I am full of pride? Clear evidence that you are full of pride is prayerlessness. This is the truth. Lack of prayer is an indicator that pride is trying to creep into your life. Allow me to make my point. Lack of prayer is a sign that shows pride is running rampant in your life. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now focus on this phrase, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. It takes humility to totally depend on God through prayer. When we wake up and go about our day without praying to God, we are saying to God, take a day off God, I can handle the matters of the day without your help. We are putting God to the side and saying, don't worry God, I have this day covered. I am the captain of my own ship and I will order my day today. Jesus didn't do that. We see in the New Testament time and time again, Jesus constantly took time himself to pray. Jesus is our example. Jesus is the one we should follow. If Jesus went to be alone to pray, you and I should do also. I read a quote regarding this link between prayerlessness and pride and found it to be extremely profound. Prayerlessness is pride. John chapter 15 verse 5 says, We are totally powerless without God. When we pray, we do so because we need His help. So when we do not pray, we are saying we don't need God, but can handle life on our own. That, however, is a lie. Don't we see it now more than ever? Asked the pastor. Right now, all of our limitations around the world 
on display. Our science and medicine are insufficient. Our economy is insufficient. Jesus alone is sufficient for everything we need. There is something very serious about prayerlessness. The link between prayerlessness and pride is undeniable. You see, when you don't pray, you are practically saying that the perfect sinless child of God, the one who never committed a sin, the one who walked on water, the one who raised the dead, the one who cured a woman with issues of blood, the one who was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, the one who died on Friday and rose up early on Sunday morning, the one who ascended into heaven needed to pray when he was on earth, but you don't? So Jesus needed to pray and seek the face of the Father, but you don't? But we don't? I am included in this. Prayerlessness is one of the sure ways that shows you that pride is in your life. I don't want God to be against me. Life is already hard enough without God being against you. Now imagine living a life with God against you. Pride begins from the heart before it is physically expressed. In fact, pride can be passively expressed. That is, it just stays right in the heart, but it's not actively expressed. Whether passively or actively expressed, pride remains pride. God not only is the judge of our actions, he also judges the intent in our hearts. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look, not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 5, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Wow, that is the Bible, not me. The Bible does not sugarcoat anything or pander to anyone's feelings. The Bible says if you are a proud person, you are an abomination to the Lord. You can be a proud person and give money to the poor, and help those in need. And in the eyes of society, you are a wonderful person. You can be a proud person and support your family and be faithful to your family. And in the eyes of your family, you are a wonderful person. But in the eyes of God, you are an abomination. That is very strong language. Pride destroys relationships and marriages. I believe a great deal of divorces are caused by pride. Have you ever dealt with a proud person? A person who can never admit when they are wrong? It's okay to be wrong. You are not perfect. Being wrong does not make you any less of a man or woman. It's okay to compromise. Compromising doesn't make you any less of a man or a woman. There are no problems too big to be solved. There are just people too small to solve them. Pride will cause people to focus on winning the argument rather than solving the problem. Okay, you win the argument. Great, but you just destroyed a part of your relationship. What is more important? Winning the argument or the relationship. Pride will cause you to go against each other. Listen to me, you are not enemies. The problem is the enemy, but both your prides has distorted both of your visions. Now you are treating a marriage as if it's a free-for-all. Every man for themselves fights. Listen to me, your pride will destroy your relationship. If you are wrong, apologize. What stops you from saying I am wrong is the spirit of what? The spirit of pride. Pride hinders your prayers. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God resists the proud. There is no good result that pride can ever yield. It destroys our relationship with people and with God. Therefore, we must desist from every act of pride and ask the Lord to clothe us with humility. Finally, the humility of Christ is our scale for measuring pride. We must grow in humility, like our Lord was subjected to God, although he was equal with him. Now focus on this phrase, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. It takes humility to totally depend on God through prayer. When we wake up and go about our day without praying to God, it could mean we can handle the matters of the day without the help of God. We put God to the side and say, don't worry God, I have this day covered. I am the captain of my own ship and I will order my day today. We do not know what life may throw at us that day and it takes the grace of God to victoriously go through each day. From this verse, we see that one of the things that was restricting the people of God from praying and seeking his face was pride. Sometimes our flesh wants to do things by itself without God's help. It takes humility to 
ask for God's grace to perform tasks that we might be very skilled in doing. It might seem silly, but let's think about it. Learnt skills such as writing reside in our memories. Without the proper functioning of a person's memory, it is impossible to demonstrate this skill. It's all by the grace of God. There is something very serious about prayerlessness. The link between prayerlessness and pride is undeniable. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.